Let's have our next question. Uh, Rebecca McKenzie, having declared a climate emergency, what should Parliament do now? Jonathan Bartley. Parliament needs to act like it's an emergency. Everything has to change, but I don't think this has to be a kind of hair shirt and sandals you know, situation. This can work for everyone if we make the right choices, but it does make, mean making the right political choices, and I'll give you some examples. It means not spending, not wasting £56 billion on a high-speed rail link to shave off a journey from Birmingham to London. <clears throat> that, that will destroy a hundred ancient woodlands and it means taking that money, just imagine this, taking that money and investing 500 million pounds in 114 towns and cities around the country to revolutionise local transport. Okay. That will get people out of their cars. I will definitely come back to HS2. Let's have our next question. Um, Paul Dottridge. Should HS2 be scrapped? <laughs> now, yes. Jonathan's already told us what he thinks. Fraser. Uh, yes, it should be scrapped, and I think the good news is it will be scrapped. Um, because whoever is um, leader after Theresa May, I think, they will, they will almost certainly exit. This was a great big George Osborne vanity project. He took a train in Japan and thought, isn't this nice and fast? Why can't we do the same over here? And if you look at the sheer amount of money that's going to be spent making trains between major cities a little bit faster versus the money that needs to be spent and all the rest of the national infrastructure, even an east-to-west line up north, would be vastly better. And I really disagree with this kind of Marie Antoinette-ish let them come to London a little bit faster um, approach to kind of regional prosperity. I mean, there is more to this country of ours than being able to get to London. And there is still, sure, we've spent, stroke wasted, a lot of money on HS2. But I spend a good chunk of my time talking to senior conservatives, and I hardly knew any of them who, if given the chance, would not pull the plug on this as soon as they get the chance. Now, Liz Truss, um, the deputy chancellor, an incredibly smart woman, is about to put HS2 projects to the test we all know it will fail any rational test. So I like to think that hopefully pretty soon we will not be discussing this massive white elephant and we can spend this huge amount of money in helping infrastructure in other places where it's sorely needed. Deep. David Gork, who's the local MP, who's a Conservative, has said we need more capacity. HS2 is one solution to this problem. It's an incredibly expensive solution. There's so many better ways to put capacity on railway than the building a shiny, slightly faster system. Poor old David Gork was George Osborne's deputy. I mean, he had, he's been complicit in this. Really. But most Tories will say privately that this was just a bizarre idea that they never quite went along with. So this isn't really about capacity. This was just about preening and posturing. And now that the Cameron Osborne project is no longer with us, HS2 should go the same way. And I should add, the line obviously goes not too far from here. Paul Dottridge, you asked the question, and I will come to Shami, but Paul Dottridge, what's your view? Would you like to see HS2 scrapped, or do you see it as an addition I, to it? I suspect it's too far gone now to cancel, but uh, you've only got to look around Euston Station now. Enormous work's going on. But uh, in principle, I think it should be scrapped. Shami Chakrabarti. Well, I'm, you know, cautious about, as an unelected person, sort of saying, you know, signing off and, and saying these things should be scrapped. But I do have some significant sympathy with what Fraser said about where we choose to invest, you know, and the, the choices that are made about infrastructure in a country that is starved of investment and infrastructure in so many places. When you, when you actually get on the trains and the buses and try to crisscross this country, you see such a differential. You see such a differential in where the spending is and where the investment is. Um, so as I say, I will, I will defer to elected people and to their electors to decide whether it is, as the gentleman suggested, too far gone. But I think Fraser had a point when he said that people pick and, people pick and choose and political elites pick and choose as to where they will invest. And it's not always in the best interests of the environment or in the best interests of most people. 
um, and, uh, and most connections in the country. Helen Waitley, I'm going to bring you in. I'm going to ask you to keep it fairly brief because I think it is quite hard to hear you, but we do want you to have your say. HS2, should it be scrapped? Well, I think what matters is whether it's value for money, whether it solves the problem it's trying to solve. Um, I also think what's really important is connecting cities of the north and investing in the infrastructure the whole of the country, but particularly in areas where there hasn't been the same level of economic growth as there has been in London and the South East. So I think making sure that the whole country gets infrastructure investment, as I say, particularly joining up the cities of the north, is really important so that we spread the benefits of economic growth across the whole country. So is that an either or? Um, so I think it, it, what it comes down to is making sure that given there's not a bottomless pit of money to invest in in infrastructure, that it's put where it will provide the best benefits and the greatest opportunities for economic growth so that it's a return on the investment. And as I said, I think it's really important to make sure that we get economic growth across the whole country. And one of the things we're seeing is real division in the country at the moment. And one way to bring us together is to make sure that everybody feels life is getting better. And in one word, is there a big question mark against HS2 now, do you think? Um, My understanding is I think there is a a review going into it, but I I haven't got the full details of the situation. Helen Waitley, thank you for now. We will come back to you. Jonathan, I wanted to come back to you for one moment because you said you, you do think it should be scrapped. And yet many people will be surprised. Trains, a greener form of transport. The people for HS2 say that they're going to create woodlands, wetlands, wildlife habitats alongside the line, more than 7 million new native trees and shrubs. Isn't that all good for the environment? Isn't that what people like you should be campaigning for? No, I mean, when you look actually at the, the detail of it, and I spend a lot of time actually at the sites and supporting campaigners who are actually putting their bodies on the line because they believe about this, uh, believe in stopping it. And Extinction Rebellion, of course, have also started uh, to target some of those sites. Um, it is, it's an act of environmental vandalism. It, it's going to have this... Huge, it's going to be a, rip, a kind of huge sear through large swathes of the countryside. It's going to uh, threaten uh, a lot of uh, underground water and aquifers. Uh, biodiversity, as I said, it's going to uh, hit 100 ancient woodlands that just aren't, you just can't plant a few more trees to kind of sort that out. That's going to hit major biodiversity. Incidentally, you know, at, at, when it's running at peak capacity, it's at 70% at the moment. So, you know, we've been sold a bit of a lie when we say we have to have this. Um, these big white elephant infrastructure projects are there really to serve the vanity of politicians and not really to serve what we need as a country.